Materials, they're great, you can have static materials, but we can also make dynamic materials. Materials that change at runtime in the game, so you can modify the values and even the images and stuff like that. However, there's a slight issue, first of all, the materials aren't all supported inside of Unreal 3D. Unreal 3D uses Blender's material editor, but not all the nodes in that editor are supported. Here is a list of all the supported nodes, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go read this and check out which nodes are supported and which nodes aren't. All the most important nodes are really supported, and I'm going to show you how to make dynamic materials, materials that you can modify at runtime. We've got a simple cube and we want to add a random material at runtime so let's go ahead and grab a diffuse node and plug that into the material output and now we need to go ahead and get the RGB wheel so we can control all the materials in that exist we can have access to them and now we need to get access to them with the logic node so go to army in the end panel and select parameter and change the name to whatever you want. The parameter node needs to have a different name from all the others because we need to reference it in our logic nodes so let's do that right now. So go ahead to the logic nodes and add a new logic node tree, grab the uninitialize node and grab the set material parameter and now we need to select the material that we're referencing and select the node we're talking about. The node is called color so we copied the name of our node and now we can change the color to our liking and play the game and here you can see that the color has automatically changed from the blue into this red color. Now what we can do is we can actually make this random at runtime so we can go ahead and grab a random color node plug that into the color socket and now every time at runtime as soon as the game starts it's going to change the color to something completely randomly. As you can see we have a white uh, looking color going on here so we can actually modify this and add in a keyboard input for example or even a on collision node so we can go ahead play this and control uh, when the color is changed but we don't have control over the color itself per se there are many other methods to control more precisely the color this is just a small example of how you can modify colors but controlling color is far from the most powerful thing you can do with this for example we can control specific values if we grab the Omri PBR node we have access to a bunch of sockets so if we get a value node we can plug this into any of the gray sockets that have float values and we can enable parameter and also modify the name to something more recognizable and unique and so we can reference that later on now we can go back to our logic nodes add a keyboard input for example grab the material value parameter and we can go ahead and reference the material we were talking about. Get the material node, select our material, plug it in, and remember to put input the name of the node that we changed. And that node is going to be the value, and this is why we added a random float. So that node is going to control the value uh, that is randomly selected. So the transparency every time we press space is going to be randomized from fully transparent to fully translucent. And as you can see, we have a well, quite a good control over this. Now, obviously, this is adding elements of randomness because I felt like it, but there's a lot more precise things that you can do with this. And finally, let's talk about pasting images on our material. So if we go ahead and get an image node right here and plug it into our base color, we can go ahead and select this object, rename it to something uh, more unique and also select parameter, which is every time you go to do that when you want to modify the material. And now we can go ahead and grab the material image parameter node, select the object and select the material node and plug it in with the material that we're working on. Now we need to go ahead and name the node that we added to be a parameter node and also the image. So we can go ahead and open up the folder that Armour 3D has created with all our project file and create a bundled folder if it doesn't already exist if it doesn't already exist and paste in the images you want. I'm going to reference these images in that node with .png at the end, that's very important. If not, it's not I'm going to recognize it. And now when we press the button, now when we press the input, it's going to add that material. Now we can also remove the opacity by plugging in the alpha into the opacity and make sure the UVs are well set up properly. And as you can see this allows us to load in any sort of image uh, texture that we want into our game. However if you want to do something else with image textures then there is this video that you should definitely go check out that allows you to modify and create images uh, with image textures without actually pre-creating them. So you're procedurally making these image textures and applying them. Very important, you should definitely go check it out and give you a lot of vital information. 
Now, this is all very, very awesome stuff, but you should probably have some more examples of how to use these materials. So you should definitely go check out these videos right here. Links will be in the description. You should definitely watch these videos. They're very, very useful for getting inspiration and knowing what exactly you can make with this type of nodes. And uh, then you should just go and try your own things. Go wild. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again someday.